first reached 1 billion in 1804. In only 200 years, the global population has soared from 1 billion to 7 billion. Researchers believe that the planet can only sustain a limited number of people, and Michael fears that we are fast approaching critical mass and will soon exceed the world's human carrying capacity. Overpopulation reaches critical mass, soils will be depleted and turn into deserts. Once those deserts establish themselves, it's irreversible. Giant dust clouds turning the sky red for days will cover the landscape. What's going to happen? Massive food riots in the streets, violence. A gallon of water would cost more than a gallon of gas. For the past 20 years, Michael has sharpened his own survival skills. But to outlast an overpopulated world with scarce resources, he believes his entire family must become expert preppers too, and learn to live from the land. I desperately want to teach my children everything they need to survive. Investing every waking hour in what I do leaves little, if any, room for making money, for college tuition, for the children. But there's something that's more important than that. Today, yeah, yeah, we're going to wake up the kids and bring them out to the woods for the whole day, see where the skill level's at, develop it to the point where I'm comfortable that they can survive all day. Hey, boys. Come on, the day started without you. Let's go. We're going out in the woods. No school today. All right. My middle child, Ryan, of the three, he's the one who walks furthest from my path. It's important to have every member of the family on board if we are to survive as a family. The world's population rises by over 200,000 people every single day. Michael believes this rapid increase will cause massive food and water shortages. So his survival plan is dependent on getting back to the basics. The key to our survival is that we become that hunter-gatherer. Come on, Ryan. I am so thirsty. Well, if you're thirsty, what would you do to get water right here, buddy? Maybe get water from the drink. How about using sphagnum moss? If overpopulation caused water to become polluted or inaccessible, this ordinary plant could save them from dehydration. It's nature's sponge. What you do is you grab a whole bunch of it, and usually it's, you can squeeze it right into your mouth and get water. You want to try it? You need to know how to do this so you can keep alive. Without water, in two to three days, you're dead. Do you understand? Two to three days? Yeah. So you want to try it or what? Look up. There you go. Good stuff? Mm. I'll keep it. Well, it'll keep you alive. Because the Douglases live on a farm that produces food and have 400 gallons of water caches, Michael fears they can become a target in an overpopulated world. So he has developed his very own alarm system to warn them of dangerous marauders in search of provisions. Out here in the rural areas, People are going to be spilling out to, to take what farmers have. I'm not going to allow my family to be a target. I've had the opportunity to play with thermal imagery cameras, motion detectors, um, early detection systems of all kinds. You know what I use? Bird feeders. Birds alarm at the most subtle of threats. By listening to the bird alarms, you have awareness of people approaching. Every bird produces a different sound, and each of their calls communicates a particular meaning, a language Michael has studied for over two decades and is now passing on to his children. What's that? Not hatch. What's Chippy. that? Okay. Today, Michael is teaching Emily about the importance of the robin's distress call which he believes could give the family a full five minutes to prepare for any approaching danger. All right, this one's not out, but tell me what it is, because it's really important. Ready? Robin's alarm? Yeah, know that one. That means somebody's coming with a lot of angry energy, okay? Um, when you have a kid who can hear that 300 yards away in the din of society, their awareness is amped. Most preppers stock up on firearms for self-defense, 
But Michael does not possess guns. He believes that overpopulation would cause ammunition to become a finite resource, and he does not want to be dependent on it. You don't need to rely on bright, shiny objects like knives and other you know, guns. Instead, plug into the landscape to see what he can offer you. Instead, his legal weapon of choice is made simply from an oak tree and a railroad spike. Nice. Other side. Excellent. Take it and chop it right to the base of the head. Boom. Dakota has practiced throwing tomahawks for over seven years. And he also has martial arts training. Today, Michael is combining both of these skills to teach Dakota a new tomahawk technique that he could use to fight potential invaders inside their home. Right? Guiding around. Boom. You're holding the blades. And now you have your, your blocks, your strikes, your long distance. Just remember, lethal, hold the blade, non-lethal, right? This is crowd control, escape. This is, there's nowhere else to go but life or death. Your sister and brother are too young. Don't share that stuff with them. One day I hope to uh, be as good as he is, if not better. Although the tomahawk is the most dangerous weapon on the Douglas's farm, it is not the only one. Like a true prepper, Michael always has a plan B. This is as powerful as a shotgun. Really try to take out one of these targets. Yes. A throwing stick is a handmade wooden tool with a sharpened end. When thrown sideways, it is an effective hunting weapon for small games, such as rabbits. Sidearm, just like a martial arts punch. It's the spinning action of this stick that, when it hits, creates all that force. You want to take a throwing stick with us? <sighs> no, I'm good. All right, so ride your bike. Everybody needs this. Who doesn't want their children to come home alive? But for Michael, offensive training is not enough. He wants his kids to be ready for danger at any moment, whether they have a weapon or not. So he conducts self-defense drills every day, multiple times a day, and often without warning. My kids are in there playing right now, so what I want to do is uh, give them kind of an awareness drill. You know, this is how they start to evolve their skill sets. So, with that in mind, let's go some fun. Hands in the air! Hands in the air now! What do you do? Both hands. Both hands. Yoga! Yoga! Alright. Alright, good. Not bad. Yeah, now hope that for two years. I get moments where people think that I'm crazy or uh, too far gone all of the time. Is it all worth it? Yeah, wouldn't trade it for the world. Michael Douglas is determined to prepare his entire family for an overpopulated world. But is his reluctant 12-year-old son, Ryan, ready? All right, so are you up for it? I'm um, guessing. I, I want to know, not I guess so, yes or no. Well, next, Michael puts her to the prepping test of his life. Three, two, one.